Nicely done there by Dustin, so he will have a chance to pick up another birdie here in the opening round. So we jump ahead to 14. And Smiley Kaufman weighing his options. But his ball is on car path, and he is going to get relief. Uh, the decision will be whether or not if he can drop in a place where he has a free swing and whether to play it from the car path. That's what he's looking at right now. I'd say, you know what? That's exactly where I'm leaning myself. Smiley figures that out. We go to Vanderwalt getting ready for his second here at 15. Fairway bunker, 156 yards. Eight iron. Pretty good contact here. Hole in the back part of the screen. Well, oh, it's well done. I mean, very well done, Jane. Another opportunity for birdie for Dowie. That will get him to sole possession of the lead at eight under par. Yeah, let's take another look. And fairway bunkers, it's imperative. Watch how s still his lower body is. You sort of have a lot more weight on your left side. You really shouldn't have any footwork at all. And that was just brilliant. So that allows you to get ball first before any sand. Good, good lesson to amateurs out there. Try and keep that lower body nice and quiet. Back to 14. And we'll find out where Kaufman is going next. Well, this is always going to have a free swing. Taking these practice swings, notice he's really opening the face up a great deal. Going to play a high lob here. He's got plenty of green to work with. Craigie really doesn't have to lob it. He could just play a normal pitch if he wants to. Yes. Slight uphill lie. Yes, sort of back in his stance. It's straight down. He really only has to land this probably three or four feet on the green, and it will collect all the way down there. The lob, the lob shot brings uh, a lot of risk. He made that shot harder than it was. I don't think it's that fast. The green's pretty soft with all the rain that we've had. Yeah, that was uh, very poor indeed. Cut right across it, chunked it. We go back to 13. Our first look at the man leading the money list, Patton Kazire. A little bit of a struggle here in the opening round. Two over par. But that shot uh, likely to get one back for him. Spins it back to about two and a half feet. As we go back to 14. Kaufman playing his fourth now. We'll get a look here at just how fast the green is coming down the hill. That's sort of the type of technique you need to use on that uh, the third shot there, Phil. I think he had plenty of green, and they're yeah. soft enough that he could have done that, Craig. Yep. Live and learn. <laughs> Move on. As we go back to the 15th, where we find the group of Chris Wilson, Dowie Vanderwalt, and Tyler Aldridge. And Burko looking. Uh at Chris Wilson right now, trying to clean his line from sand and all sorts of other debris. Just uh, struggling this year with his with his game. Really had a couple of nice years in a row out here on the web.com. Not quite good enough to make the PGA Tour, but really struggling so far this year. 151st on the money list. Just making four of seven, uh, four of 11 cuts uh, so far this season. His best finish, a tie for 50th earlier this year in Columbia, so uh, really unable to get much traction going uh, in the first part of this year. Yeah, it's a guy that won in Springfield in 2012, finished 34th on the money list to, to Jane's point, and then 42nd last year, and you just get off to a bad start, and you lose confidence, and then you play more, and you start pressing, and then you change things up because you need to think you need to do something different, and you sort of get in this downhill spiral and it's tough to get out of. And as we near the halfway point of this season, Craig, how difficult is it not to press, not to force the issue when you realize you've got a lot of ground to make up? Well, you've got to remember that this is the 12th event. There's only nine more events after this week to get before the end of the regular season, 21 events. So you've got to go. You really do. And uh, you do start to put a 
um, some undue pressure on yourself. And every putt that you think's going in does not. That was a pretty good effort. Let's go ahead to 16. The little par three, devilish little par three, back at the clubhouse. Sort of exciting though, isn't it? 156 yards today. Whole location right in the front, but there is some slope all around it, and that one was right on line. Fourth easiest hole in the golf course has given up 24 birdies today. Now back to the 15th green where Tyler Aldridge next to play. And giving this one the full court press here, Burko. A little uphill putt, I'd say about 15 feet. Should swing just a little from right to left. There's a ridge off the uh, right hand side of this green, sending the slope that way. Very makeable birdie putt, though. All right, so what he's doing right here is this aim point express. You sort of get the gradient of the slope and you figure out whether it's, you know, a, a one finger break, maybe six inches. And then you go, can obviously go all the way to, you know, a couple of three feet. But it just it helps you read the green. So it gives him confidence. And obviously shooting 23 under par last week, it has to be working. Victor. Yeah, it really senses it in his feet. Isn't yep. that the, uh, yep. the whole idea, Craig? Yep. And some people are more instinctive, you know, they really kind of feel it instinctively with their feet and their eyes, and others uh, prefer a little bit more uh, analytical method. Yeah, it's sort of linear versus non-linear, really, isn't it? I think yes. we've become a little too analytical, Jane, in all of this uh, stuff that's going on with TrackMan and AimPoint. And mm. So while Aldridge misses it at 15, we go to the 13th, Dustin Bray to get to five under par. You know, Berko, you're, you're the king of college. This guy went to UNC. Seven wins, the most of all time at UNC. Bet one better than... Oh, we'll say Davis Love. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Good guess. <laughs> the former first team All-American rolls that one in, gets to five under par as we go back to another collegiate standout at Lamar, Delhi Vanderwalt. This for the outright lead to get to eight under. Yeah, he graduated in uh, 2007, Burko, 32 years of age from South Africa. Big man, 6'5". His clubs look like toothpicks in his hand, really. And this should just be a right edge putt, I think. Straight up the hill. Opportunity miss for Vanderwalt, but in with par, remains at seven under. Bogey free here in the opening round. He was so close to victory a year ago at this event. His fine golf at the Lakewood Country Club continues. A look down at the 16th at Lakewood Country Club, the par three. Rand stands around the back. This is Gibson. Yeah, the Aussie's looking to make his eighth birdie of the day. Straight up the hill. Hit it firm enough. Well, he did a couple of things correctly. Just pushed it out to the right. This is Ash Hall at 14, just short of the green at the par five. Mm, that took a little nasty bounce to the left. Certainly didn't anticipate that happening. Thirteen. Second shot coming up for Shane Birch, currently four under, trailing by just three. He's had a pretty decent year, the 45-year-old, 35th on the money list. A couple of top sixes. Westchester Country Club hosting the best ladies in the game for a major championship. The KPMG Women's PGA Championship continues tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern Time on Golf Channel, Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern Time on NBC. 
at the great Westchester Country Club. I happened to play there six or seven times during the Buick Classic. Can help me, uh, 50 uh, yeah, that's it. This one, you like one more? No. Look back at the T at the 16th. Uh, given that, that's why I'm just thinking yet. I mean, there's some there. I think that this is like a smoothie there. You like this one? Junior, yeah. Rather than the other one, you know, full spins back some and you know, got it all glory there. He has pulled a nine iron. Whisker of breeze behind and from the right here on 16. Beautiful little par three. Yeah, we had the graphic there. It's just 12 on, pretty much in the center of the green. This green is only 22 paces deep. Uh-oh. This is a bad swing. Started left and going further left. Hmm. Warning track power. Vanderwalt now. Uh, also chosen a nine iron. You understand what they were saying, Jane? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Afrikaans, Afrikaans. That's Afrikaans. exactly right. Hoping for a bounce from the left here. Should get it. Come There's up. some slope over there. Come up. There it comes. Come All right, keep going. Keep That's going. the way to play it. Right, well, you think, I think you played this hole about seven times on yeah. Sunday <laughs> last <laughs> year. <laughs> Let's take a look at last year, as a matter of fact. Stephen Alker had this for par at the 18th on Sunday. Ends up making bogey, which opens the door for Vanderwalt. 18 not playing as an easy hole last year by any stretch. Vanderwalt had hole. this birdie putt to force a playoff. And so it begins our legacy, our epic journey. It's 16 this right is 16. Here. This was the third playoff hole. Straight up the hill. Got it. That would have ended it. Yep. Both players made par for 10 consecutive holes. Yeah, 172 yards with a seven iron. Stephen Alcott said later he could not feel his legs. He was completely discombobulated, certainly didn't show it right here. He stuffs it with that seven iron. We had lost track of how many times they had played 18 on Sunday. It was approaching double digits by the time we got to the playoff. At least it felt that way. Yeah, and this was Stephen's fourth. Career victory on the Red.com Tour. Playing the PGA Tour this year. That win catapulted him to that position. The longest playoff in the history of professional golf. 11 holes. And we were here. And he's talking about it right now. I was talking about <laughs> Did you know that I parred this hole six times on Sunday? Longest sudden death playoff in a PGA Tour sanctioned event. Took an extra 41 shots in the playoff. That's and more than half a round of what, golf. What was amazing is Stephen kept hitting it on every fairway, every green, giving himself great opportunities. Darwin couldn't hit the green and got it up and down from the trash can. It was pretty amazing. Now here is Ash Hall for birdie at 14. Australians lost in a couple of playoffs. Uh, that was a couple of years ago, 2013, when he finished 27th on the money list, but struggling this year. Memorably in uh, Utah, as a matter of fact, Salt Lake City found the water during the playoff to Stephen Alka, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Malnati and Arnaud among those at the top of the leaderboard. from the West Side Market here in Cleveland. West Lake, Ohio, about 12 miles west of downtown. The Lakefront, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the Q. 
where the Cavaliers are playing game four of the NBA Finals later today. We go back to 15. Where Kyle Thompson sizing up this putt for birdie. And Craig, even though he won a couple weeks ago, he still doesn't have enough money yet to get earn his PGA Tour card for next year. He's still got work to do this year. Yeah, he's at 117,000, so absolutely he, he needs to get to 150 plus. That had, he was just so relieved. I talked to him on the range this morning. And, uh, you know, the only reason he got into Raleigh is because he was a past champion. He's done 12 Monday qualifiers this year. The only one he made was at the Farmers Insurance out in San Diego. And what a new lease on life. Well, you know, what was really funny was listening to him talk about the letter that Arnold Palmer sent him. The yep. fact that his wife almost threw it away. Yeah, that's true. Arnold Palmer sent him a letter congratulating him on his performance. And the wife thought it was some, another sort of piece of uh, information from about real estate. Nice. Pure class and truly the king. That's all you really need to know. <laughs> you hang on to that one. Uh, you know, Kyle played the PGA Tour in 2008 and 2012. Uh, very limited success out there. But you wonder, a uh, young man, uh, not a young man anymore, in his mid-30s, and, and was at the end, Craig, was ready to walk away. I think it devastated him. You know, he, he, he played, has played 54 events on the PGA Tour, has only made 13 cuts, and I think it just demolished all of his confidence and really has struggled uh, to regain it until last uh, a couple of weeks ago. Smiley Kaufman now for birdie. So he rolls in another one. That gets yeah. him back to three under Phil. Yeah, he's rebounded quite nicely after that double bogey. He's quit doing those little swing drills we were talking about and playing golf again. As we jump ahead to 16. Vanderwalt for his birdie. Well, this is a tricky little slide. I've got to match the line and the speed and have quite a bit of borrow from the left here. Severely sloping green from back to front. Just to get to eight under and sole possession of the lead. I know it's only the first day, but certainly building off confidence from last year. Oh, beautifully done. Just absolutely loving Cleveland, I'd have to say. Trying to get redemption. Make our way back to 13, where Sam Chen getting ready for his second shot. Currently four under par, four shots behind the lead of Vanderwalt. Went out in three under par 33, 30 to 12 to get to four under, and not quite sure what that was. <laughs> Woefully short. See if he can get up and down as we jump ahead to 17. Peter Tomasulo. Great hole here, Steve. Really one of the, I think it was the toughest hole on the golf course last year. 452 yards. You better drive at the fairway. The second shot is blind. And a little unlucky. If that had carried maybe a foot further, it would have kicked towards the flag. Bernard Langer looks to defend his crown against recent major winner Colin Montgomery and the Champions Tour's best. The Constellation Senior Players Championship continues tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Langer six under on his round today. Lee Jansen's playing well. He's two back. Montgomery three back. Jansen also qualified for the U.S. Open coming up at Chambers Bay. Part of the golfing Cochran clan from Paducah, Kentucky. Just a little nine iron here for Rick. The breeze is from the right, a little help. Pretty simple shot, really. Continues to take good looking iron shots if it's enough. It is. Good shot. Gonna come back down the hill. This could get really close. Really close. Oh, 
but uh, utilize that slope. It's sort of like a saucer, an upside down saucer, I guess. It's banked from both sides, and when you put that whole location in the middle, which is about where you can put it on this screen, uh, you can have some runs at hole in ones. I like that. Phil, I have a question for you as we watch Smiley Coffin. What was the best piece of memorabilia that you received while playing? You know, that's a tough one. I, as far as from players, I have a picture with Arnold Palmer and Jack Nicklaus that's, that uh, is dear to me and also a little bit funny as they're standing and I'm sitting on a ledge to get us equal height. That's still looking up at you? <laughs> a little bit. But I did also receive a book from the late Jim Flick, uh, The Badminton Library, written in 1890, a second edition by Horace Hutchinson. And that, that book is uh, very interesting to read and certainly dear to my heart. Yeah, I was very fortunate after I won the players in 02 to get a handwritten letter from... Lord Byron Nelson uh, that Phil Blackmar has told me and probably going to call my wife to make sure I frame that and display it somewhere as of yet it's still sitting in the drawer Something, some of those things you really cherish and Kyle Thompson said that letter from Arnold Palmer is even better than the trophy Last year at this event it was Justin Lauer on the tee at the 16th Voted the Web.com Tour Shot of the Year. One hopping in. He finished tied for 55th at the event, but had a great memory here in Westlake, Ohio. How many career aces for you? Six. Six. Three in competition. One was actually in Q School, which helped me get my card, and then one was at the Travelers Championship, which won me a Rolex watch. So, wow, pretty decent. Sold it, though. Traded it in for something for Maureen. <laughs> not that you're bitter or anything like that. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> it's a good pattern at 16. Back at the 14th, Bray has this for his birdie. Down the hill, should break to the left. It sort of hopped right on him there, never got a good roll on it. Vanderwalt by himself now at eight under par, tearing it up on the golf course where he reached a playoff last year. A host of players in with 67s today. Back at the Rust-Oleum Championship, new sponsorship this year for this Web.com Tour event outside of Cleveland at Lakewood Country Club. At 16, Kaufman to get to four under. And this putt swings quite a bit to the left. Mm, just snapped right across the hole. He can't believe it. Such a difficult green to putt, isn't it, Craig? Yep. It should be. It's only 156 yards, Phil. As we jump ahead to 17, third shot here for Gibson. And Craig, as we were discussing just a little while ago, that this is a big boy hole. You know, you, you sort of get lulled into the 390-yard <laughs> par fours. And true. when I first looked at 17, I said, oh, this, is, this is a golf hole. It's a great, great finish, 17 and 18. So Gibson uh, scrambling just a bit, trying to save his par. As we go back to the tee with Vanderwalt. And looks like he has three wood out here on this hole. It's playing slightly into the breeze. The two, a bit down slope. 294 to that point yeah. there that is the run out pretty much of that trees. And three was about all you need. With a, this, although this is back into the wind, isn't it, Jane? Yes, it is playing into the breeze. This is going down the right side. Oh, very nice bounce. That's what you want. Handy bounce. Yes. So in the fairway at 17 for Vanderwalt as we go back to 15. Ash Hall for birdie. Try to get within one of the lead. It's 
the heat will remain at six under as we go back to 17 with Tyler Aldridge. And also chosen three wood. Wind into and off the right. Starting down the right side and drawing back towards the left side of the fairway. It's actually a smart play because you you only have to carry it about 250 to catch the down slope, which will propel it forward, and you don't want to go through and left. Back at 16. Cochran in close for his birdie. Look at that thing. Just wow. Power. That would have been for three straight birdies. Now back at 17 with Wilson. Should be no problem here for Chris. So that in the fairway for Wilson as they make their way down the fairway, getting ready to wrap up their first round of play. Opening day coverage of the Rust-Oleum Championship. Dally Vanderwalt leading the way at eight under par. Alnani and Schneider in the clubhouse this morning with rounds of seven under 64. Today's coverage is brought to you by Vokey SM5 Wedges. More ways to shoot lower scores. Golfnow.com. Book tee times 24-7. Back at the par 3 16th as the sun starts to peek its way through the clouds here in northeast Ohio. And so a little down from the right, 156 yards. Ash made about a power, a wedge there if he so chose. Flip sort of right into that ridge. Back at 17, Gibson trying to save his par. Yeah, twice as, oh, look at that. I was going to say twice as many bogeys as there are birdies on this hole, but he doesn't add to that bogey number. Well done. Very good save there by Gibson. He remains five under, trailing by three as he heads to the last. And we go back to 14. This is Shane Birch trying to get to five under. Early walk. On Monday, Golf Channel brings you a whole new golf adventure, speed, strength, endurance. The show has it all. Don't miss the series premiere of Altered Course, Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Out to the 17th. There we've got a trio of approach yeah, shots coming up. Chris Wilson first to go. Right. And different strategy Four here for Bruce Wilson. Right the TV tower. 206 yards for the young man from Dublin, Ohio. Stinger. Clear view of the green. Up on the top plateau. Hole today, just right on the front, just six on. Jane, I'm not sure if I'd want 200 yards into this. I'd rather I'm have a blind shot from 150, to be honest with you. Yes, uh, I'm with you, uh, without question. This comes up a little bit short, but pretty straightforward pitch. Yeah, Darby will have uh, 160 yards. Yeah. And I like that play much better. And uh, as tall as he is, Craig, he still can see the green. So it's no problem at all. Really? I yeah. know that we were down there at some point last year. And even with that hole in the front, you'd think that you couldn't see all of the flag. That, that procession, great look here from behind. Yeah, he's not all the way down, uh, you know, at the lowest point. He's uh, part way down the hill, but a reasonably flat lie. Okay. Well, he and his caddy, uh, Johan, who's also from South Africa, got this one figured out. Can't be much more than a nine iron here for Derby. Right. 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 
Another solid iron shot there by Vanderwalt. He has hit 15 of 17 greens here, continues to lead the way. Eight under par for the man that lost in an 11-hole playoff a year ago. Looking to do one better this year and is off to a great start. Thank you, sir. Throwback Thursday here on the web.com tour. We go back to 2004 and Jimmy Walker. He was a two-time winner on the web.com tour that year. The first one was the Bell South Panama Championship, which was a five-shot win. That's in Lafayette right and there. And then Lafayette, Louisiana. Louisiana. There you go. Just three events later, would finish that year number one on the money list. Since then, his story's been well documented. Five wins on the PGA Tour, two of them this year. Right now, second in the FedEx Cup points race, and he says a lot of his current success is based on his experience on the web.com tour. You know, coming out of school, I didn't quite get my tour card right away, but I was able to play my way on through Monday qualifying the web.com tour, and I think that's one of the beauties of that tour is because, uh, you know, you're able to play your way on through qualifying. It's very doable, and you see guys do it year in and year out. And once you're out there, it really teaches you how to travel in your life. Uh, you know, you come out of school, you've got college coaches kind of running the show for you, and, and you kind of get out, get out there and get on your own. Definitely taught me how to compete, play well, because um, you really have to shoot some really good scores out there to win. Uh, teaches how to win out there, and I really think it helps you move on to the next level. Yeah, it took him, it took him 187 events to win for the first time, then went to work with Butch Harmon, and now has won five times in really a year and a half. Quite remarkable. That hole comes up, uh, well, skirts the left edge. As we jump ahead to 17, Tyler Aldridge getting ready for his birdie effort. 